Hey y'all, welcome back to the kitchen. It's good to have y'all in here with me. The only thing that's here with me today is my grandson. And I'm going to make him some Mexican food. That's always good. I don't think I've ever turned down Mexican food. This is a casserole that's easy to make and I like the way you present it because you cook it in your iron skillet and you serve it in the iron skillet. I'm going to bring y'all over close. Actually, it's a tamale pie. It's very good. I'm going to bring y'all over close where you can see the ingredients and then we'll uh, point the camera to the stove while we get everything For going. this tamale pie, we're going to need a can of black beans drained and rinsed. I've done that. A half a cup of bottled chili sauce. Got that ready. You need a tablespoon of chili powder and one and a half teaspoons of salt. I'm adding on my own a tablespoon of onion powder and a half teaspoon um, and a teaspoon of uh, garlic powder. You know I always add that. You want one can of fire roasted diced tomatoes. You want two cups total or one and a half it calls for but I always put extra. Grated cheese and you want a seeded and diced jalapeno to put in it and then we're going to slice one that goes on top. It's topped with a cornbread mix and I've got my mix, my egg and my milk ready to whip that up. So let me, uh, I've got my meat, it takes about a pound to a pound and a half of ground beef and mine was frozen so I've got it uh, browning and crumbling on the stove. Then I need to add in my onions and cook it until they're uh, translucent and then we'll add the other ingredients. So I'm going to let this meat continue to defrost and brown and then I'll bring y'all back and we'll walk over there and watch while I put everything and in. My the meat is getting, it's all thawed and it's turning the, from the pink to the brown color. So I'm going to let it cook just a jiffy more. But I'm going to go ahead and add my onions in. <clears throat> because I want them to go ahead and be cooking. And this is just a medium sized onion chopped, one and a half to two cups of chopped onion. Man overboard. And I'll stir them in there and maybe crank the heat up just a snitch, get it to medium low where they'll uh, just wilt down and be translucent where they won't be crunchy in the tamale pie. So I'm going to let them cook for just a snitch and then I will bring y'all back and we'll add the tomatoes and beans and chili sauce and all the rest of the goodies. I'm going to add in my chopped, I, I seeded a jalapeno and then this is a, a roasted one that I had that I'm going to go ahead and add to it. But it costs for one seeded, uh, and then you have one that you put on the top at the end. Y'all hear the June oven playing me a tune? It's telling me that it's ready to, to cook it. I'm going to put these in while the onions are finishing so that the, the green one that I seeded will get soft. I cut my heat up to medium and it's sizzling along pretty good now. So just as soon as this gets uh, tender, the onions and the peppers, we'll add in the rest of the ingredients and get it in the oven. Okay, I'm going to add in my fire roasted tomatoes. and my can of black beans. Okay, I'm going to add my chili sauce and then my salt and uh, chili powder. And I'm just going to stir this around and let it the flavors all get married and have the same name of tamale pie. And then 
I'm going to stir a cup of cheese into this mixture and let it sit there and kind of get gooey while I make the cornbread mix to go on the top. And it has uh, a cup of cheese in it also. Then you put the peppers on the top. Love, that looks good already. That would be good in a taco. Okay, I'm just going to let that sit there for a minute and I'm going to add some cheese to it. I'm going to put about a cup. That'll just make it kind of bind together so when you serve it, it'll be stuck together a little bit better. Turn the fire off and just let it sit here a little bit. Now I use the five blend Mexican cheese. You can use cheddar or whatever your preference is. I'm using a package of Morrison's cornbread mix and I need a half a cup of milk and one egg and that's a big old egg for my little ladies out there. I'm going to get this whisked together and then I will add my cheese in. I love this bowl. One time when April was a little girl, she had saved her money and she bought me a set of three Pyrex bowls uh, for Christmas. And I've still got She did that twice. I've got two little sets of three that she bought me. She would listen and she would get what she heard me say I wanted. And that's how her daughter, Lauren, does her. She pays close attention to what her mom says and she tries to get it. April had wanted some blue plumbago bushes and uh, Miss Lauren got them. She said, Nana, where can you find some, some blue plumbago bushes? I said, what for, baby? She said, Mama wants some. So I found them and got them and we surprised her that Lauren had her what she had asked for for Mother's Day. Okay, what I do now is I'm going to put my cornbread on the top, then I'm going to stick these peppers on top of that. So let's get back to the stove, folks. That Here we go. Let me get a spatula. Okay. I'm just going to dot it, and y'all probably can't see what I'm doing. I'm just going to blob it around where it'll be easier to spread it out to the edges than from one big hunk in the middle. And this is just my 10 inch cast iron skillet give you an idea about how much it makes. I'm just going to leave it at that and I'm going to put my peppers around on the top and I didn't seed them. Some of them might fall out but oh well. I'm going to stick that one down in there and it'll look like a little piece. Okay, the June oven is hot and I'm going to put it in there and cook it about 18 minutes just until the cornbread's done. Y'all hang around for the best part. Coming up. Hey, I've got it out of the oven and uh, I'm just going to let it cool a little bit before I try to cut it. Do y'all have one of these little things that's made, a pot holder that's made to go on your iron skillet? They are wonderful. I don't know where I got that one, but I do know that Sir La Taube so, uh, sells some that's similar. I think theirs are silicon, but they work the same. They're just wonderful. Here's a picture okay. of the plate. 
and I scooted it sideways a little bit where y'all could see the filling in the cornbread. I'm going to serve this with a little spoon of uh, the Chewy's uh, dip that I made uh, Tuesday or Thursday. And I'm going to have some shredded lettuce and tomatoes and some more cheese. Thank y'all again for coming in the kitchen and listening to me rattle, talking about layaways and all kinds of stuff. I did that Thursday. And um, so today I'm going to use part of that layaway recipe and put some of that Chewy's dip with this dish I made today. But I'm going to shred some lettuce and chop up some of my garden tomatoes, have some more cheese and some sour cream, and we're going to doctor this up and enjoy it. Hope y'all will come back in a day or two and we'll have another good recipe. And in the meantime, put a little bit of stuff in your pantry to get a little bit ahead. You might want to start thinking about Christmas. Buying a little gift along and hiding it under the bed or somewhere where you'll be ready because you might not be free to go shop. Who knows what we're looking at. And I want to have some kind of a Christmas whether I'm locked down or not. I mean, you just got to have Christmas. So y'all be thinking about it. Be wise. Make good choices. Plan ahead a little bit where you won't be so stressed with your food, with your gifts, with birthdays coming up or whatever. If you plan ahead, it won't matter what's going on in the world. Everything in your house will be A-OK. -okay. The good Lord bless and keep y'all. And I'll see you again on Tuesday, if not before.